hey guys and welcome back to another youtube video so in the last video we talked about how i managed to create this kind of data science project uh you you know using classic indicators and basic like techniques data science techniques and i was talking about you know me wanting to create a neural network for this and i've been busy on that and so here we have a neural network that i've created to predict these prices now the neural network isn't complete yet because i still don't have predictions as accurate as i wanted it to be however i am still working on this and i just thought i'd make a video on it just so that you could get an idea of how i approached this problem and how you can potentially approach a problem like this in the future so the first thing that I have done is we have created a neural network to predict the future. The data site is just the close prices. I was planning to use indicators, but when I actually used them, I realized that it wasn't the best technique and I tried to get some predictions. However, uh, when I was using indicators to get the predictions, I saw that the predictions weren't as accurate as I wanted and it was getting a little difficult for the model to predict the future prices because we don't know what the indicators will be looking like in the future and so I just decided to scrap the usage of indicators and just to use uh, the uh, close prices as a input but whatever that's enough uh, so here I have the data set as the close prices and I just did some very basic processing on the data set just converted it into a numpy array uh, reshaped it uh, into like a two dimensional shape uh, this is just so that I can get the training size of the data set and you know so I can split training and testing Really all we are doing is we are taking 95% of the data set for training and 5% for testing And yeah, so here I'm using the min max scalar that a scalar provides and the min max scalar allows us to take the data and Transform it into something which ranges from 0 to 1 Because uh, that's really what neural networks are good at predicting so that's really what uh, the min-max scalar is uh, doing over here. So over here, you just define the scalar and we fit transform it on the data set that we have. Then we prepare the feature and the labels. So we have the x-train and the y-train. Now I set the prediction days to 60. You can use any number of prediction days that you want. And yeah, that's, that's really, so we are gonna be looking at 60 prices and then we are gonna uh, append like the 61st price as the uh, uh the like the label so the 60 prices will be the features and the 60 first price will be the label and we just continue doing this till the length of the training data and then we just convert all of this into numpy arrays and reshape into it into a three-dimensional data because that's really what we're going to be passing in into our lstms so here i've used an lstm approach and we are not just using a LSTM, we are using a bi-directional LSTM. So we have a bi-directional LSTM with 75 units and we're obviously returning sequences. And then we have another bi-directional with 64 units. And then we have two tenses, uh, one with 300 units and then we have 32 units in the next one. And then we just have the output layer with one unit which represents the output. Next, I'm using an early stopping callback with a patience of three, which means that if the loss isn't improving uh, or going down uh, over, over a period of three epochs, then we just want to terminate the model because that kind of indicates that the model won't be doing any better now. And so rather than waiting for it and letting the model train completely and wasting time, we can just stop the model from running uh, by monitoring the loss. <clears throat> And that's a really cool kind of trick that you can use. Uh, you can also pass in a couple of other parameters, like I think it's like min delta or something like that. Uh, but I don't like to, I'm currently not using them. I'm just using your like simple thing, uh, a patience of three. So here, as you can see, this is the model that we have with uh, this as the loss. Uh, it's a pretty cool model. However, it is a little overfit, which is something that I noticed and here i'm just getting the predictions so really all we are doing right now is just creating the testing data and then uh, uh all, all that's really all we are taking the scale data so you don't need to do the scaling again 
and then we are doing the same thing that we are doing for the training data just for the testing data and right now i'm just using the training data for testing data and the real reason why i'm doing that is because i'm just training the model over a period of one year and so i don't really have a lot of testing data to test the model on uh since it's just five percent testing data and if you take like the 300 days that i have uh data worth for and you take the five percent of 300 uh where it's just 15 days worth of testing data and 15 days really isn't a lot so i'm just taking the uh scale data in this case which is to be honest it's okay so then as you can see over here we have i've just uh gotten my predictions i'm just getting the first five over here just printing them out uh and as you can see over here the model is fairly accurate however it is not good at predicting these minor changes in trends it is it is acting like a simple moving average of some sorts uh wherein it is able to predict uh stuff like this however it is still not able to predict like minor changes and that's kind of like the issue that i noticed when i was using this model is that it is not able to detect smaller variations in prices which is something that i don't like and so i really want attention to be paid to these smaller variations and that's when i realized that this is really what i was maybe looking for which is attention is all you need or transformers transformers is something that i really wanted to implement in this scenario i um, and i think they work i am not extremely sure if transformers are the best idea for something like this however i just realized that uh you know uh, this was working but it wasn't showing me a lot of tolerance or a variation when in there are these tiny variations in prices like these little spikes and drops because it was just able to predict uh, smooth lines which is not something that I like and maybe maybe if you kind of work a little bit on this you might get something that kind of is able to predict stuff like this but I just am not able to do it so i am currently using a transformer uh, i still not settled on the type of model i want to use currently the transformer is actually performing worse than the lstm however <coughs> it managed to solve the problem that i had uh so as you can see here i have the encoder defined uh, the encoder is pretty simple all uh, if you find this to be a little complex i won't be going over and explaining what transformers are in this video because they are a video of their own they deserve it uh, they are pretty complicated they, like they are relatively it's a complicated architecture and I won't be uh, rushing it in this video so I won't be going over them right now but just keep in mind I'm using transformers and if you really want to know what they are uh, you can read the paper uh, by the Google brain researchers they are really really it's a it's a pretty simple paper it's not something too complicated to understand if you kind of have a little bit of idea then you will be able to do it this is the architecture that we that the transformer follows again i won't be going over them right now because there are a bunch of terms like positional encodings and embeddings and batch norm and stuff like that which i haven't exactly explained on this channel before and so i cannot assume that you guys know that so i won't be going over transformers right now if you want me to go over transformers do let me know in the comment section so you as you can see i have defined the transformer encoder and then i have the build model function and this is the entire like uh transformer decoder part i just uh there's no ex separate function for this uh basically because the transformer decoder is really just a bunch of dense layers stacked now i actually didn't write this code because i was not so familiar with the transformer architecture at the time when i was writing this code so i ended up just copy pasting like most of it I, i've changed in a, maybe a few hyperparameters over here but like 99% of it is the same uh, but yeah I, you know to be honest it, you just really need to understand this once you understand this the code over here is actually relatively simple code again I'm using the early stop and callback on this and then I just um, creating the model over here so as you can see over here I have this over here and then I just called the model summary over here so we have a total of 122,000 parameters over here which is less than the number of parameters that we are having in the uh, LSTM which is 204,000 but the training time on this one is still a little long and just you know if you want to know my parameters these are the ones that I'm using I'm using a head size of 46 number of heads of 60 uh, a feed forward dim of 55 
and I have five transformers blocks, uh, five transformer blocks all stacked on one another, and I'm using four hundred MLP or multi layer perceptron units, and the multi layer perceptron dropout is point two with a regular dropout of point one four. These are the upper parameters that I'm going with. You can use any one, any one that you want. It's up to you. The next thing I'm really doing is just getting the transformer predictions. And as you can see, even though the transformer is uh, not as accurate as you might want it to be, uh, the one thing that I really noticed is the fact that it kind of solves the problem that I had with uh, the uh, LSTM, which is that it was getting smooth predictions. Uh, this one, the predictions, you know, you can see that there's a little bit of like noise in them, which kind of mimic the uh, regular stock price. Uh, and as you can see, it kind of pays attention to the tips over here. So as you can see, there was a little dip for the transformer, you know, the multi-headed attention, it kind of realized that there was a dip here. And so that's really kind of a cool thing that the transformer architecture has allowed me to do. So here I'm currently comparing the LSTM and the transformer model with one another. And so as you can see, I have the actual the transformer prediction and the LSTM prediction. Uh, you can just kind of, let me run this one again. All right, there we go. So as you can see, I have the actual the transformer prediction and the same prediction. Uh, you know, you can go ahead and kind of take a look at that. It's it's like pretty simple stuff. So as you can see, even though the act LSTM is a little more accurate than the transformer, uh, the transformer is able to better predict uh, smaller variations in prices, while the LSTM is currently just doing the task of a moving average and it's not doing really you know crazy stuff so here i'm computing the losses now i'm currently using a custom loss function uh, rather than something else so the way my loss function works it's, it's it's a very simple loss function i'm computing the log of the absolute value of the widest minus predictions i and in the transformer case i'm just using the transformer predictions and then i'm just adding a soothing factor or an epsilon term Really what the epsilon term does is it basically, in case if we have a log of zero, which is not possible to compute, we just add the epsilon term to this so that our losses just don't go crazy. And so you just add this little epsilon term. Just, you know, you wanna add this cause otherwise, uh, if your model per performs very good, then you're gonna get very crazy losses of infinity, basically cause you're gonna be having a log of zero. So in areas like here, where the transformer basically matches uh, with, the shorts, with the stock price, like this one and this one, these ones, in these cases, we are going to be having a uh, loss of zero, which is not what we, uh, I'm sorry, loss of infinity, which is not, which is not what we want. So that's something. And here I'm just checking if the lengths are the equal. These are, this is just some basic debugging that I was doing. Uh, this is the RNN versus transformer using custom loss functions graph. As you can see, I have a bunch of graphs in this entire video. Uh, and this is really the way you should implement any data science slash neural network project. So as you can see over here, I have the loss and the index. So index is basically the index in the list and the y axis is the loss. So as you can see, although the LSTM loss, is, the RNN LSTM loss is relatively always lower than the transformer loss there are very few uh, cases where the transformer loss is lower than the rnn loss as you can see in these areas the transformer loss has a big bit of a dip so between index is 75 to 100 uh, in most cases as you can see the rnn loss is low however it's kind of a neck to neck fight the main reason why the rnn loss is higher in the places that it is is really just because of the fact that the RNN that we have again is not able to predict smaller variations in prices, which is causing uh, kind of the loss function to uh, act like this. So yeah, that's something. Uh, so basically, you will see that in stock prices that don't move that much, aren't that volatile, using an RNN kind of sort of works because it really it isn't able to detect uh, heavy volatility. So I would recommend that when you are predicting volatile assets uh, using a transformer might just be a little bit better because it's able to pay attention like literally it is able to pay attention because of the multi-headed attention layers that we have while the RNN using LSTMs isn't able to pay attention it's just able to memorize stuff and so the predictions that it is giving me are relatively smooth 
smoothed out predictions which is not something that you would want in a volatile market uh, since it will just be able to indicate a trend and it won't be able to indicate a specific price like it will literally just be doing the job of a MACD combined with um, a, a simple moving average so it, it, it really will just be this combined with uh, this which is not what we want so yeah uh, and so uh, let's say if you're predicting a crypto price like dogecoin or something that you know a meme coin which you know usually it goes up down stuff like that uh, in such cases i would recommend using a transformer if you're predicting something like oil or gold or stuff like that stuff that usually isn't very volatile in such cases i wouldn't recommend that you use a transformer like it's good and it will still work maybe even better than the LSTM however the processing time on the transformer was a little longer for me uh, it's really just because of the fact that I'm I really don't know how to code out a transformer nicely and I could implement like parallelization and make it a lot better however I really I don't know how to do that so yeah so that's really it for this video I hope you enjoyed it and this video really shows you how you can approach a neural networking problem obviously this is still a work in progress and this is a really really cool project that i am absolutely enjoying working on uh, all of this is available on github so if you want to go ahead and check this out and if you really want to kind of code this out by yourself or if you want to use this as a little bit of inspiration or anything like that all you have to do is just look up on github and uh, you know you'll get all of this code available uh, you can download the data if you want by yourself and I, you know, I'm just challenging you guys to create the most accurate model. Uh, so, you know, because if you don't want to deal with the data processing and stuff like that, you know, if you kind of think that that's a bit of an hassle, then you can use the code that I provided. Now, uh, note that the code that I'm using in this case isn't uh, extremely simple code. It is a little complicated. For some people, this is pretty simple, but, you know, just saying this isn't very, very basic code. So I wouldn't recommend people who are absolute beginners in the field of neural nets and data science to look at this basically cause it will feel a little more complicated than what they are used to looking at. So just, you know, keep that in mind before you guys uh, check this out. So yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's really all I have for this video. This was really more of like an update video. Just walk you through what it is that I created and what it is that I'm meaning to create. Although this did get a little long, I mean, it's 17 minutes long. I've been trying to cut short on my video length these days. So, yeah. So, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like, subscribe, comment down below what else it is that you want to see. I'm currently working on a bunch of really, really cool neural network projects that you'll absolutely love. Uh, they are coming in, in the future. Not I, do, I don't know exactly when, but I, I'm working on them. And the thing is, they take a little bit of time to create. So, that's why. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.